And so again, as 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 we reach the June thirtieth um, point in this in in this year, um, the prior options available to us um, to remain in distance learning or any other option, uh, any of the other options that were added this year are no longer um, no longer available to us. And so we will follow state law with regard to the educational options for next year. Um, the first option and the main option and the one we would like um, we would like all our students actually to partake in is the full in full in person return. And so uh, we are coming back to um, the so called traditional or regular regular school year um, with a full return uh, full time full schedule um, just as as we've done in the past prior to the pandemic. And so um, that is an option for. Um, probably 90, 95 to 99% of our students and, and um, really for the academic and social emotional health of our students is the best opportunity um, for them. And so um, with that being said, please understand that that's our main option. Um, tonight's presentation uh, will be focused on the independent study options, uh, mostly the centralized independent study, which we'll talk more about um, shortly. And then the independent study, we have an independent study option at Washington High School. That option is for our students that are looking for um, an independent study program that that provides little oversight of students other than their their um, their meeting meeting with their teachers a few months. Um, this would be something for a student that maybe like on a national soccer team. Um, who's an actor who just needs that check in, but is highly motivated and can do the work on their own without without much guidance from a teacher. And so that's the Washington High School independent study. And then the home choices are are TK through eight, um, which is home choice, meaning that the parent pr parent serves as as the teacher and has a connection with with the, with the, a teacher in the district. But most of the education is happening at home with a parent. And so those are the other than the full return. Those are, are three of our options and and tonight the main option we're here to talk about is the independent study that's centralized at participating schools, which is a new option we are providing and and ultimately will turn into our online our basically our main online program. And so um, next slide, please. So as we as we begin begin to talk about independent study. Um, this is for students who meet the criteria that we'll discuss tonight that voluntarily choose to be in this program and thrive in a virtual environment. Um, there is not a guarantee that that um, all students will be enrolled in this option. There are some there are legal requirements in order to be involved and legal requirements to stay in independent study. And so we'll go through those tonight with you and again, be able to answer questions you have. Um, all students must still have all the required immunizations that are required of any student coming onto any campus um, for the school year uh, in a regular school year. Um, this centralized independent study will be hosted at select school sites. And again, as independent study, it must be voluntary. Um, the students homeschool will provide any necessary textbooks and initial Chromebooks. And then Chromebook exchanges or te technology issues can be um, exchanged or um, taken care of at any school site. Students with an IEP or 504 may be an independent study only after a 504 IEP team decides it is an appropriate option for a student and it is on a voluntary agreement of the student and the parent. And so um, for our special ed students, it is a requirement to hold that, that IEP meeting. Um, and then students who are not completing assignments or not being successful and following their contract an independent study, maybe move back to their original home school for full, full return. And we'll talk about later on when we talk about enrollment, we'll talk about the process for um, for getting into for getting into the program and having conversations about the program to see if your your student uh, qualifies and if this is their best option. Next slide, please. And at this point, I think I'll turn this over to Mr. Dade, our assistant superintendent of student services. Thank you very much, Dr. Peterson. Um, on this slide, we're going to take some time to talk about a combination of qualities that we have seen in uh, students who have been successful in an environment. And so some of these qualities include um, students being able to manage their time well um, and not procrastinate. 
Um, independent studies really is a, an environment where a student needs to be working daily, um, not just a couple of times throughout the week. Um, this is also an environment where students who are able to take a, their textbooks um, that we distribute to them and they're able to interpret, really work through that material um, and be in a virtual environment and, and kind of keep moving forward and making what they need um, to achieve successful grades. Um, this environment is also for an organized and self-motivated student. And so, once again, there's a student who may need some help with organization. Um, they could still be successful, but um, organization and self-motivated is very um, important to, to be in this environment. Uh, in this environment, students will need to have a good kind of method or, or have good skills in writing um, their message. Um, because really all of their work is going to be something that they have to, you know, either virtually or in writing. Uh, they environment where they can talk through particular um, uh, questions that a teacher may have on a daily basis or for the um, students have to know how to ask help um, and often I, I have three children at home and I've taught my children how to to ask for help and not to be you know bashful or shy or wait to the last minute so just really need to be able to be individuals and ask for help um, finding a quiet place at home is very it's very critical if there's a TV or video game or a high traffic area in your home, um, that could be a big distraction and really um, lower the uh, achievement level of, of that child or your child. Um, so in an independent environment, the family really becomes a team. And so the family would need to be able to be there to help keep their student or their child organized um, and help them manage their time very well. Um, because remember, in a traditional setting, they're, they're used to bell systems or they're used to seeing their teacher every day where they could be reminded. So now that's something that that um, parents and guardians or, you know, everybody in the home will need to be able to help um, their their child with. And so I have a, a child at home in an independent learning environment for years now. Prior to COVID, he was, um, he went into that environment and it is critical um, that you have daily conversations, that you help them with the organization of their materials, um, that you help them to communicate via email, text or phone, you know, their teachers. So. Once again, it is a family family journey. It's not on the student as well, but the student needs to be the catalyst or needs to be extremely motivated. So um, just a couple of qualities that we've seen, but um, but definitely um, students can learn and grow things, but these are something that they need to have right away. Um, so thank you for your time. And I'd like to turn the time over to Dr. Ritter. Good afternoon, parents. I will be talking to you about the elementary portion of the independent study, and that applies to grades um, transitional kindergarten through sixth grade. Next slide, please. So our main area of concentration for the elementary uh, uh, independent study would be two school sites. Uli Ranch Elementary will host the TK through third grade program and Michael DRC Elementary will host the fourth through sixth grade program. The dates for these um, independent study program will be the same as regular school calendar dates. School starts on August 4th and uh, semester one ends on December 16th and then semester two starts on January 11th and ends on June 3rd. And the daily instructional schedule, which you will see in the following slides, will be same as the instructional schedule for these two schools. Although your students will be attending these schools remotely, they will follow the same routine for these two schools. Next slide, please. So this is the schedule for our transitional kindergarten and kindergarten students. Uh, basically, the part that you see in green is where the teacher is having direct uh, interaction with uh, with your student. Most of these will be whole group, but there may be some times where teachers will be working in small groups with the students. Uh, the part that you see in blue is where this may be a small group interaction or a one on one interaction. All students, irrespective of grades, are required to meet with the teacher one on one for a student teacher conference every two weeks. And of course, with TK kindergarten, even maybe with first through third grade, parents may want to be present during that conference. These conferences will be 
basically to make sure students are on track and are progressing well. Uh, on Wednesdays, um, so these the, the blue portion of these are optional. Most of it will be scheduled by uh, teachers, but parents are also uh, welcome to schedule these if they need to. Next slide, please. This is the schedule again for first through third grade students, and these uh, students will be registered under Cooley Ranch. So this is the schedule for Cooley Ranch. So, sorry, students will be on uh, starting school at eight o'clock uh, in the morning. And uh, the first section, if you see, is the ELA and ELD instruction. And this is a two hour block. Not all of it will be direct whole group instruction. Some may be a uh, small group, some may be independent practice. And then uh, the same thing with math. And then following is science, social studies and ELA. You will get more detailed information uh, from your uh, individual teacher once you register into this program and the schools get started. Um, I want to um, get your attention to the bottom part. This is where students will be doing some independent assignment where this is the purple section, and this is when teacher will be meeting with students in a one on one setting. So these conferences will be scheduled by teacher every two weeks. They will be meeting with your student, and then we have one hour where students can go for extra help during the office hour. The on a regular um, day, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday, the school day will end at 2 15, uh, but on uh, Wednesday, the school day will end at 12 50 p.m. Next slide. This, <laughs> excuse me. This is the schedule for fourth through sixth grade. Very similar, just the time is a little different. For fourth through sixth grade, the day starts day starts at nine or five a.m. and it ends at three twenty p.m. and on Wednesday it ends at one fifty five p.m. Pretty similar to um, for what we have for first through sixth grade. There is an ELA block and a math block and a history and social studies block. And then there is a hour and conference at the end of the day. Uh, but again, you will be getting detailed schedule uh, once you start get join the program and um, teachers will have specific schedule based on the grade level. Next slide, please. Uh, these are some expectations for our uh, parents and guardian of the students. Uh, as Dr. Peterson um, and Mr. Dade emphasized that we want this program. This program is really for students who can work on their own and can be successful mostly on their own with some teacher guidance. And the uh, um, expectation for parents is also very similar. Like we know that you have high expectation for your kids and you will support it, it, the expectation is not a lot of sim dissimilar from what our expectations are with parents in regular school. You are there to support your students. That's why you are here in the meeting today. But some of the things will be articulated in a contract to make sure because the setting is a little different and the teacher will not be seeing the student physically every day. So here are some of the things listed here. You need to ensure parents need to ensure that they attend online classes regularly and we want their students cameras to be on so that the teachers can see what they're doing and have a, a full a full fledged conversation with the students. Uh, parents, we would like parents to oversee their schoolwork on a daily basis and verify that all they have completed all the assignments and they have turned in especially for the little ones, help them with the login or maybe accessing some websites, um, help them with uh, the comprehension, communicate with teachers regularly. If there are any issues or concern that you notice, you can let the teacher know and then attend teacher conference whenever the teacher is requesting uh, to meet with you. Uh, and if possible, have a dedicated space where your kid is going to school and they're comfortable there learning throughout the day and then work with your students and you can involve with the teacher, have a plan so that you are successful and your student is successful in this unique setting. Next slide, please. These are the expectations for our students. Again, uh, we want students to log on to all the virtual lessons with their camera on and not only just log on, we want them to actively participate and complete all the assignments and also submit the assignments on time. 
um, and complete whatever work is assigned after school. And we want them to maintain a minimum level of performance to make sure to uh, save their spot in this program. Uh, we, we need the students to meet with their teacher every two weeks once to discuss progress. They will need to follow all the CGUSD discipline codes and guidelines. Um, and then they will have to um, sign the uh, master agreement, which are what what you will see listed in the agreement are some of the things that I'm uh, mentioning here. Next slide, please. And these are the expectations that we have of your students teacher. We also expect teachers will be connecting with your students regularly for different lessons with their video on. They will group and also one on one. They will provide feedback on assignments. They will conduct the biweekly meeting. They will put all their grades in our portal queue and inform parents about this achievement and student participation. They will maintain records of student attendance, engagement, assignment, uh, and keep parents updated of information. Next slide, please. And um, ongoing evaluation, uh, because this is such a unique uh, program, student progress will be monitored on a regular basis. So we need students to submit all assignments on time every week and also we want them to maintain satisfactory grade which for elementary we follow a one through four uh, four uh, scale of grading where four is the highest uh, level more than 90 percent and three is above 72 percent so we want them to maintain good grades if they are not maintaining good grades then maybe this setting is not beneficial for the students if a student is having difficulty keeping grade or not submitting assignments, it will lead to some progressive interventions and some of the things may be like an intervention meeting with the teacher, uh, contact with parent, uh, then parent teacher conference, and then finally involving the site administrator. Uh, Mr. Pinnell, I'm, thank you. Oops, I'm seeing lots of wonderful things now. And unfortunately, I don't have this memorized. <laughs> Let me check. I think my part is mostly over. Uh, so basically, it will take two different progressive disciplines for student. Um, discipline meaning that we want to make sure that a student is successful. And if they are not proving to be successful, then of course, we would like them to return to their regular classroom. Thank you. Now I will hand over to Dr. Mooney for the secondary part. Thank you, Dr. Heider, and good, good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Mooney, and I serve the Colson Joint Unified School District as the, its Director of Secondary Education. And the next set of slides will introduce you to some of the basic information about how the Secondary Independent Study Program works. So if we can go to the next slide, please. Next slide. Similar to the elementary dates, the secondary dates mirror the regular school year, including holidays and breaks. Independent study will be hosted by these two schools, Ruth O'Harris Middle School for seventh and eighth graders and Colton High School students for in grades nine and 12. The instructional schedule will be the same as the regular school schedule previewed on the next two slides. So next slide, please. The middle school start time will be at 8.12 a.m. with a 30-minute lunch break at 12.01 and the school day ending at 3.10. Class periods are 49 minutes in length. Next slide, please. The high school schedule start time will be 7.25 a.m. with a 30-minute lunch break at 11.43 and the school day ending at 2.24. It is important to note that the schedule times may change depending on the master agreement. Next slide, please. Secondary student expectations are that students will be scheduled into courses required for promotion at the middle school and graduation at the high school and are required to complete the graduation requirement of 220 credits for high school and maintain 115 credits and maintain, I'm sorry, and, and achieve 115 credits and maintain a 2.0 GPA for middle school. Students will work with their counselor to select the courses and grade level to meet the graduation and promotion requirements. 
Students will also complete all district assessments and state testing requirements, as well as maintain and remain motivated. I'm sorry, remain motivated and com committed to keeping up with their work uh, and to um, challenge themselves to set goals that will help them work independently and explore their future options. Students must also sign and adhere to the independent study master agreement, as well as log in to all live virtual classes daily and actively participate, complete assignments and submit assignments on time. Meet with the instructor at least once every two weeks to discuss progress and follow all discipline codes, dress codes and behavior guidelines for the district. Next slide, please. So here's a list of courses a student, a middle school student may be enrolled in. These courses will be determined by your counselor and independent study teacher and recorded on your master agreement. Next slide, please. Here's a list of courses a high school student may be enrolled in. Like middle school, these courses will be determined by your counselor and independent study teacher and recorded on the master agreement. If you are involved in any special programs, you're going to need to place, uh, please check with the counselor uh, for program availability. Next slide, please. So what to expect from your secondary independent study teacher. They're going to create and publish the semester course syllabus and assignments and provide those to the students. They're going to plan and deliver live virtual daily, daily lessons with video on. They're also going to provide whole group and small group instruction as well as one on one support. They'll provide feedback on assignments completed independently. They'll conduct bi weekly meetings with each student and their parents, guardians to discuss progress, review instruction, and provide support. They're going to complete an update grades and queue and inform the parents and guardians on student work, progress, achievement, and participation and maintain timely records of participation, engagement, engagement, and assignments. They'll meet with parents and students to complete the master agreement, provide assignments to provide time value on the, of assignments, and keep and verify attendance of your student. Next slide, please. So for as a parent, here are some guidelines for a successful student experience that we've uh, have seen over the past year. The oversee school work and, and on a daily basis and verify that lessons and assignments are completed uh, to ensure an attend, uh, ensure students attend their online classes regularly with their cameras on, assist your student with lessons as needed, and monitor student comprehension, as well as communicate regularly with teachers and refer your student to teachers as needed, attend teacher conferences, uh, and help students create a dedicated learning space and create a family plan for success. Next slide, please. So here's an academic recap. Students will be scheduled into six classes uh, per semester at the high school and seven courses per semester at the middle school. District adopted course syllabus and learning objectives will be met as described. Students will meet the course objectives and assignments provided by the, the, uh, the teacher and, and identified on the master agreement. Student assessments, both state and local, will be completed as required. And then, of course, high school diploma requirements is 220 credits for graduation. And then middle school promotion requirement is 115 credits and a cumulative GPA of 2.0. Next slide, please. Lastly, as with elementary, your students' progress will be monitored on an ongoing basis. The following steps shall be taken if intervention and supports are deemed necessary. And please remember what Mr. Dates shared earlier in the presentation as it relates to the characteristics of a successful independent study student. It really does take a village um, and a lot of work and energy on behalf of all stakeholders to ensure student success. So thank you. And next, I would like to introduce Missy Kingston, Director of Student Services. Thank you, Dr. Mooney. Uh, next slide, please. So for parents, we will be having a Google form that we will add to our district website on June 7th. And Mr. Pinnell, if you can click on the independent study application 
Parents, I just want to show you what this will look like. It's very simple. It will have um, some information about independent study that we've discussed tonight. And then you will list your students first and last name, their ID number, your name, and the best contact phone number for you. And then please list their home school site for the 21-22 school year and their grade for the 21-22 school year. And what will happen as a result of this, this is uh, sort of like an application interest um, document so that the counselors, we're going to have some counselors in the summer that will contact you to set up an appointment to have a conversation. So when those counselors meet with you, it'll be with you and your student, and they will really discuss the independent study program, as well as looking at academic history, attendance history, et cetera, of your student to make an individual determination on whether this is the best program for your child. Students that meet eligibility um, then will meet at the beginning of the school year or in late summer with a counselor along with you, their parent or guardian, to discuss the independent study master agreement. And as Dr. Hyder and Dr. Mooney discussed, that will really have all of the information about what is expected from, from the school, from the teacher, from the students, and from the parents, as well as the courses the student will be enrolled in, how many credits they can earn, et cetera. Again, uh, relating what Dr. Peterson shared at the beginning, for students on an IEP or a 504 accommodation plan, a 504 or IEP meeting must be held once school resumes prior to applying for independent study. Um, and just a reminder that this really is a program for a very select group of students. Not every student will be eligible for this program, and it may not be the best fit, but we did want to offer it uh, to parents as an option for the 21-22 school year. Uh, next slide, please. At this time, if you have any questions, if you'll please place those in the Q&A section, we will attempt to answer as many as we can this evening. And we will also be posting uh, the presentation as well as an FAQ with the answers to the Q&A questions um, for all of our parents to be able to see on our district website. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Peterson. Thank you, Mrs. Kingston. And and just as a, as a reminder, you know, this is really the wrap up of our presentation tonight. Um, just as, as a reminder, um, uh, for those of you that may have joined us late, we are um, planning a full return in person to campus. So this meeting tonight was focused on the independent study um, program. And so um, the, the goal is that the majority of our students, if, if, uh, if not mostly all of our students come back to our campuses this year uh, when we begin in July. Um, and then again, the independent study option is is available for those who, again, thrive in that environment, um, and are able to, and able to able to do that. And um, Missy, I was answering questions when you were speaking. Did you discuss the meeting with the counselors? Yes, that the counselors will meet with parents and students during the summer to, to discuss independent study to see if it's a good option and fit for their student. And so, really looking for um, if your if your child was in FLL facilitated online learning or um, distance learning and was not successful, uh, we really encourage you to um, bring them back to a full in full in person return um, um, because this would not be the environment that would be conducive to 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 their learning. Um, when can you apply? See that question there. Um, we will be sending out the application on June seventh, and then as soon as um, as soon as we get counselors in place, hopefully at that time, they will start calling in um, the applications and speaking to making appointments to speak to um, parents and and students about the program. And so again, do do want to reiterate as we've talked about today. This is not distance learning. This is independent study. It, there are laws involved in in the different laws involved in in what what the requirements are, and whether or not we're we're able to offer that. And so, uh, we'll stay stay on here um, probably till about five forty five, about eight minutes to continue. Um, go ahead and continue with questions. Um, we'll try to talk talk our way through them too with you um, as you have them and and to give you that that information. Uh, is there a cap on the amount of students being allowed into the independent study for high school? Um, that is one of the reasons why we centralize these at the school sites. Um, if we were to put these with uh, like the normal, the our prior independent study at Washington High School, there is a cap on those that are at the alternative sites. So there, there uh, is not a cap for 
um, the amount of students for the high school. Um, again, though, we are we are hoping that the numbers are not not a uh, great great or large numbers because we feel the best place uh, for the students are are back in person at the sites. Um, as far as the COVID testing piece, um, we will follow the county health guidelines that are available at the time we're coming back. It does not look like there will be COVID testing that is required at that time. So um, more than likely, uh, if all things continue the way they're they're going, that will not be a requirement. And then do the students follow the same curriculum as in-person students? Yes. Uh, we're using the same. One of the reasons that we can offer this is that we're using the same same programs. Um, and again, that could be um, you know, there are other options. One of the prior people asked about CTE classes, and we have a you know online CTE program with prior op that we that are available, and we have some ingenuity courses that could also be used um, with online courses if we do not have access to some of the courses that are available. And again, that would be worked out with each independent student as to what their schedule looks like and how their courses are are um, woven together. And as far as students part, yes, students will be able to participate in their promotion ceremonies. Um, they would go back just like they would at high school at the end of the year, they would go back to their home school to graduate or promote from. There is no cap for Grand Terrace High School independent study. There is no Grand Terrace High School technically independent study that will be at Colton High School. What would disqualify a student from being able to do independent study? Um, if they were a special ed student and didn't have an IEP that placed them there, that would disqualify them. Um, if they participated and facilitated online learning this year and, and did not pass their classes, um, that could qual disqualify them from being there. Um, really, we're, it, it needs to be something the students, by law, the students have to meet the requirements of um, of submitting their assignments and and making progress and any time at at any point that does not happen, the students can be returned or disqualified from independent study. And then opportunity opportunity to make up credits, um, just like our other other. Um, Opportunities at, at high schools, they would have similar opportunities as far as uh, if there's after school credit recovery or weekend credit recovery options, online course uh, concurrent enrollment with community colleges, um, or online CT courses through prior op. Those are all areas where they could technically take more um, more courses to make up credits, as well as attend this this year's summer school. Um, is it self-paced? It is not self-paced. Miss Yellett, you answered the inter-district inter transfer question. Yeah, let me find that one. At 540. Um, right now, the vaccinations, COVID vaccinations are not considered required immunizations. So that the, my understanding is the state state is not requiring that, and so unless the state required that as as a vaccination, we would not um, require that either. What's about the third question up, Missy? 
don't have an answer. Yeah, I'm, not, to that. I'm not seeing it on my end. Can you just read it, Dr. Peterson? So if my child is enrolled in independent study, does my child lose a spot in his current school? We are an interdistrict transfer. Most likely, yes, because they would be enrolled in the independent study track at the independent study school. So we'll have to look into that. There's so many outlier situations with where the students enrolled and what courses they're taking. So when we be able to enroll in the program, as we stated, um, starting starting uh, June 7th, there will be an interest form to complete online with your information. At that point, we'll turn those counselors will take those and make phone call appointments. Um, make appointments to get in touch with with uh, with the counselor to explain more about the program and and whether or not your student um, is a good fit for it, and then they will those students that are a good fit will be placed into the program. And I would just say in general too, uh, for those of you that are 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 going to go go this step and go through this process, please be patient this summer. This you know again we've and you know spent the last year kind of redesigning instructional systems, and this is another redesign. And so we've been working as quickly and as hard as we could to try to get this put together and understand the understand our options, understand where we're able to do it, that we have the capacity and how this fits together um, the last month and a half. And so we're, we know there's still questions that some questions that need to be answered uh, even on our end. And we're still working, working to get that, get those completed and those accurate, but we really want, um, and, and, and as we get started, um, we will continue to, you know, as things come up um, or changes come up, we will continue to communicate that out to parents and, and try to keep you as informed as possible. And we just ask that as we go through this summer process and getting enrollment, it's one of the reasons we wanted to make sure we had this meeting right now before school ended um, was because of the fact that we know uh, we didn't want to do this. Last year, a lot of stuff was done the week, week of school starting or the week before. We wanted to try and get um, be cognizant of that, use the summer to get as much done as we could and get as many students enrolled so that when school starts, we're ready to go. And so over the month of over the month of June and beginning of July, um, we'll be doing the enrollment pieces. Mid mid July um, is when most of our school sites and administrators and everyone starts coming back. And so we'll um, some of those and teachers will be hired in, in in July, and and so we'll be able to go from there. My kid has health problems. Can that be enough for her to stay home? Um, again, it, this program is for um, those students that are that are progressing or that make progress and are, are adequate progress in in the program. And so there are um, there are again legal requirements to that. We also so that would be an option. The option at that point um, would be again you'd want to talk to a counselor and find out what options are there. And please continue with the questions. We'll stick around since people are still asking them. Um, we'll stick around for a few more minutes. Um, but again, we'll again post this recording to the website as well as the questions and answers that have been asked tonight. So, so keep continue to ask, and we will we will stick around for a few minutes. Yes, a student who is enrolled in independent study would be would be eligible for concurrent enrollment. Thank you for your kind words, Mr. Velasco. We appreciate your patience as well. And your ability to adjust to what, what's happened this past year.
Okay, it looks like the questions have started stopped rolling in. So again, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, feel free to um, feel free to uh, get in touch with us as needed, and we can answer answer questions um, if you have more questions. And then just be ready for June seventh when that application comes out. Um, you can even if you're not sure, fill it out, and then you can at least get a chance to talk. Um, to get in touch with a counselor to be able to ask questions as well. So we appreciate you being here tonight and have a great evening. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.